Good afternoon. So the next topic on Fourier series that I want to go over uh, is the uh, just some remarks about the formulas involved for the Fourier coefficients. After that, we're going to talk about how we extend these Fourier series for any symmetric interval, not just minus pi and pi. That's going to be just a quick short lesson because it's a it's a small modification. And we will finish up with some examples and the last topic on Fourier series will be some discussion about the convergence of this series. Again, a very short lesson on the convergence. There's an entire chapter uh, in the book, but I'm not going to go over that. I'll just uh, discuss briefly under what conditions and to what values these series converge. As you may guess, they will converge to pretty much most of the points of the function itself. The only point in which you have to be careful about the convergence is the point, possible points of discontinuity. But we'll get to that in due course. Now, the reason I want to go over these remarks is because people sometimes are still a little bit confused on uh, why in some cases you take these formulas for the coefficients on the right half of the symmetric interval. So if you remember, we talked about the Fourier cosine series over the interval zero pi. And the same thing for the Fourier sine series over the interval zero pi. And the formula for the coefficients is with two over pi integral to zero from zero to pi. And uh, when you have a general function between minus pi and pi and you want to find its Fourier series, so a function which is um, neither odd nor even, um, you take the integral for over the whole symmetric interval minus pi and pi, and the formulas for the coefficients are somewhat similar, but not exactly the same. If you notice, it's not one over uh, two over pi, but one over pi and then integral from minus pi to pi. It's really no big deal, uh, especially since in practice you apply this, I mean, you don't apply this formula, you just use tables of Fourier series. But I think it's useful to know why that's the case, why these formulas um, are similar and how are they related. And it really has to do with some properties of even and odd functions over a symmetric interval with respect to the Riemann integral. So I wanted to recall something very useful in calculus to know. If you have an even function, so remember if you, uh, an even function is one that looks like this, that if you replace x with minus x, you get the same thing. And uh, an odd function leaves the minus out when you change x with minus x. Uh, this notion of even and odd, remember, it's when you look at a symmetric interval. And in case of an odd fu uh, even function, uh, like a parabola, for example, uh, the integral from minus c to c of that function is twice the integral from 0 to c. Okay, it should be obvious because of the symmetry with respect to the y-axis, the right half, the area on the right half is the same as the area on the left half of the interval. And if the function is, so that's if it's even. Uh, if the function is odd, so let's say you have f of x an odd function, and then the graph would look something like this, not exactly like this all the time, but, you know, symmetric with respect to the to the origin, uh, then the integral from minus c to c of that function is going to be exactly zero because the two halves are equal, the areas, but uh, the one of them is below the graph, below the x-axis, so it's with the negative sign. Um, so it's like uh, adding and subtracting the same area. And another property related to my remarks uh, here uh, is that if you have it's pretty much like natural numbers. If you multiply two even functions, so if you have, um, if f of x is even, g of x is even, then f of x times g of x is even. If you, re you know, replace x with minus x, you get the same thing. Uh, if f of x is odd and g of x is odd, then f of x times g of x is even as well. Uh, if you want to convince yourself, if you replace in the product x with minus x, each of them is odd, so it leaves the minus out, but minus times minus cancels out. So as it turns out, the product is going to be even. 
right? So if you replace x with minus x in the product of two even function, uh, two other functions, uh, then you get an odd even function. Just like just an uh, analogy with with uh, numbers. Really. Well, actually, it's not. Um, uh, sorry, it's not like numbers actually, because you know, odd times that is not is not going to be even in, with numbers. But with function, is going to be even because of this cancellation of minus. And uh, if if a function is even and another function is odd, the product is um, odd. <clears throat> right, because for example, if you have f of minus x times g of minus x, f of x is even, so that becomes f of x. Actually, No, that's fine. That's good. I, I had a, I had the feeling that I made a mistake at some point. So g of minus x is minus g of x. Minus f of x times g of x. So if you replace x with minus in the product, it's the product with minus on the outside. And yeah. Okay, so with these properties, let's see how these uh, functions, excuse me, these formulas for the Fourier series are related. So notice that if you have an, let's start with an uh, even function. So if you have an even function between minus pi and pi, and you're looking at the Fourier series formula for um, the cosine part of the problem, if you look at the a n in the Fourier um, formula, the, the one between minus pi and pi. So if you look at one over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi, of um, f of x, so let's say this is f of x, right? So f of x cosine of nx dx. So if you're looking at a n, which is part of the general Fourier series, right? The last formula here. But again, let's suppose that the function itself is happens to be even. Well, in that case, because f is even and cosine of nx is an even function, the product of them is even. So you can take the integral, I mean, the integral between minus pi and pi can be written as twice the integral from zero to pi of the same thing. And so that's the reason why you can take the formula just on the right half of the interval, just between zero and pi when you do that integral. Uh, if the function itself is even to begin with. And if you are to look at the coefficient bn of that Fourier series, the one corresponding to sine of nx, here we have an even function times an odd function. The product is odd and the integral of an odd function over a symmetric interval is zero. So the remark is that if the function is even to begin with, so if f of x is even on interval minus pi pi, its general Fourier series becomes a Fourier cosine series. The coefficients corresponding to sine of nx disappear are equal to zero. So in a sense, the four general Fourier series actually include the Fourier cosine series and sine series over half of the interval. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you could look it up as an exercise. Now, if you do the same thinking, if you in the case of an odd function to begin with, you could probably guess that the coefficient for the cosine will be zero because notice, actually I can, maybe I can fit it here. If you look at a n, one over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi, f of x cosine of nx. Well, now if f is odd and cosine is even, then you have an odd function. So now a n is going to be zero. The coefficient a n will be zero. And bn, which is going to be 1 over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi, f of x sine of nx, 
dx. Now you're going to have an odd function multiplied by an odd function, which becomes an even function. So therefore, the integral is going to be twice the same integral from 0 to pi f of x sine of nx. So it becomes a Fourier sine series in that case. So I just wanted to go over this remark, not because it's overly important, because I as I said, we don't use, uh, we don't compute this integral by hand, but just to avoid any possible confusion on how these formulas are built. So the general Fourier series is the most general one. It actually includes the sine and cosine series. Um, but uh, if you have a function to begin with, if you have a function from zero to pi to begin with, and you either need a cosine and sine series, then you can use these formulas uh, here in the beginning with 2 over pi, the integral from 0 to pi. Because the other portion would be redundant, would be 0, right? I mean, um, if you have an even function and you try to compute uh, its sine corresponding coefficients, that's a waste of time because that, that portion will be 0. So I hope that clarifies this. And on the next page, we're going to move on to see how we can extend these series to an interval from minus c to c. So, I mean, for, uh, for any, um, uh, any symmetric interval, I mean, not just symmetric, but basically any number besides pi. So, the same type of topic, Fourier sine cosine series on the interval, on any interval from zero to a number or over a symmetric interval. The formulas are very similar, so I will just basically prove one of them to see where it comes from and then just state the other ones. So stay tuned for the next page. Okay, so let's see how we find a Fourier series representation for a function piecewise continuous now over a generic symmetric interval minus C and C. So we're going to do this just for the general series because the for just cosine and sine it follows easily, right? I mean, if we have the same discussion with even versus odd functions, so the formulas will be very similar. So uh, the starting point is a function f of x with uh, x between minus, oops, with x between minus c and c. So I'm going to prove the formula for this uh, case, and the proof of the formula will actually be useful later when you use tables of Fourier series because it will indicate what you're supposed to do to change the interval because most many tables may give you the formula for example between 0 and pi or something like that and uh, then you need to know how to modify that series to adapt it to the interval in question. Now sometimes the formula is given already between minus c and c so that means all you have to do is to replace C with whatever the number is in the problem. But in general, if you have to change a given interval to another interval, you do basically a change of variable. So pay attention here. This is the starting point. That's the given um, domain. And we already have a formula for minus pi pi. So we have a formula for a Fourier series for a function between minus pi and pi. So I'm going to just make a change of variable to come up with a function between minus pi and pi related to the f of x. So in order to come up with that change of variable between minus pi and pi, I'm going to divide by c both sides of the inequality. Obviously, in the context I give you here, c is greater than zero. So if I divide by c, then I'm going to have um, x over c between minus one and one. And then I'm going to multiply the inequality by pi. And I obtain uh, a quantity that depends on x between minus pi and pi. And I'm going to make a change of variable for this quantity. So just to summarize, if I give you an x between minus c and c, under the change of variable y equals pi x over c, which by the way, if you get it in terms of x by itself, we'll, we'll get that later, but if y is pi x over c, automatically it follows that y is between minus pi and pi. So this substitution y equals pi x over c is the same thing as saying that x is replaced by cy over pi, right? You can solve for x in terms of y, S same idea, right? The same, the same equality. So that means my function to begin with f of x k 
can be viewed as a function in y via this substitution. So f of x is a function of cy over pi. And I can rename it uh, to be g of y, for example, just to view it as a function of y. At the end of the day, I mean, when everything is done, we're going to get back to x to come up with formulas for the original f of x. But for now, again, f of x can be viewed as a function of y. y, which is in the interval minus pi and pi. And this is also piecewise continuous, so this will have a Fourier series representation. a n cosine of n y plus b n sine of n y where the coefficients a n are given by 1 over pi the integral from minus pi to pi g of y cosine of n y dy and b n 1 over pi the integral from minus pi to pi g of y sine of n y remember for the cosine coefficients n goes from 0, 1, 2, and so on, and n goes from 1, 2, 3 for the, cosine, uh, for the sine coefficients. So basically, that's all there is to it, really. I mean, the, the only thing we do now, just for convenience, we're going to rewrite these integrals in terms of x, so that you don't have to do this uh, substitution um, all the time whenever you want to use the, um, the integral definition for the Fourier series. So uh, how do we go back to the original x? Well, we're going to make a change of the variable back to x inside the integral. So let's illustrate this with a n. And the same idea works for, um, for b n. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just do it for a n. So in the case of um, a n, remember the y, so, so basically y was uh, pi x over c. And that means dy, so let's write the substitution here. Uh, let's, let's actually write the substitu substitution first, excuse me. So y equals pi x over c. And dy, the derivative of the differential of y is going to be pi over c dx. So we're going to make this use up this substitution inside the uh, the integral for a n here, uh, and we have also have to change the bounds of integration. So if y equals minus pi, go back to the substitution and replace y with um, uh, y with minus pi. Pi cancels, and that gives you x equals minus c. So the lower bound of integration is minus c. And if I replace y with pi, cancel pi, and then x equals c. So a n becomes 1 over pi. The integral from minus pi to pi, that becomes now minus c to c. Uh, g of y is going to be g of, um, let's see g of y g of pi x over c <clears throat> and then cosine of n y uh, which is n pi x over c and dx excuse me dy is going to be pi over c dx <clears throat> g of pi x over c Okay, so actually this g, remember, is related to f over here. But let's, let's simplify this a little bit. This pi over c, this constant, can be pulled out. And 
remember g of y was f of cy over pi, right? So actually, you can replace back g of y with f of cy over pi. And when y is replaced back with the substitution with pi x over c, then you're left with just f of x inside the inside f of x, inside the function f. Yeah, I should have wrote g of y right away in terms of, you know, f of g, c y over pi. But when you replace y with um, pi x over c, then c of and pi cancels out. Then pi cancels out, and let's write here the formula. So then a n becomes 1 over c, the integral from minus c to c, uh, f of x, cosine of n pi x over c d uh, x. So that's the formula for a n, and in the same manner, you can quickly prove that b n, so that'll be for n equals 0, 1, 2, and so on. And for b n, the formula is going to be very similar, 1 over c, the integral from minus c to c, f of x, sine of n pi x over c dx. <clears throat> so... You see, we could have actually done this, this Fourier series on the interval minus c and c to begin with. But, you know, I prefer to do it from minus pi to pi because uh, these coefficients are a little bit easier. See, these, you know, the uh, inside of cosine and sine is just nx, right? If the interval is just, if c equals pi, you always have, you always have pi, you know, and c disappearing, right? I mean, because they cancel out. So c equals pi will give you just cosine of nx and sine of nx. And in general, for any other number besides pi, then you're going to have these quantities inside the sine and cosine. You'll get used to that quite um, um, quite a lot because when we move on to various intervals, when we solve um, boundary value problems on various intervals, which are not necessarily um, zero pi, you will have those quantities popping up uh, in the process of solving those uh, boundary value problems. Uh, and for the Fourier sine and cosine series, again, the formula is very similar, but you're going to have 2 over c. So, for example, if you want a Fourier cosine series on the interval 0 c, um, then co the um, um, representation will be summation of a n cosine of n pi x um, over c with uh, a n given by 2 over c, the interval from 0 to c um, we're going to sh write this problem on the next page uh, 0 to c f of x cosine of n pi x over c. Let's actually write all of this on the second page because I don't think there's enough room here because I want to go back obviously to replace y with uh, n pi x over c also in the um, in the series representation over there. So let's stay tuned for the next page. All right, so from the previous page, general Fourier series on a general interval minus c and c on a symmetric interval. The representation looks like this. Remember that y was um, pi x over c, right? So therefore, the series is going to be a n cosine of n pi x over c plus b n sine of pi uh, n pi x over c with a n given by 1 over c, the integral from minus c to c, cos n pi x over c dx, b n 1 over c, f of x times sine of n pi x over c dx. And for just sine and cosine series, so if you're looking at just 0 c, and you want a Fourier cosine series only. The representation looks like this. 
very similar obviously, and a n is gonna be two over c integral from zero to c f of x cosine n pi x over c dx. And if you want a representation in terms of sine functions, basically everything like before, except you have m pi x over c inside sine and cosine, and those integrals are from zero to c. This is just for the completion of the theory, so to speak, because again, like I said before, we don't do often these integrals by hand in practice anyway, but we need to know where they come from, these coefficients. So it's time now to see how we can deal with these tables of uh, formulas. And uh, like I said, you can, you can use that table in front of you. And uh, later on, I'll probably write down ahead of time some of these formulas, but let's say as an example, that I want a Fourier uh, cosine series for the um, for the function f of x equals x squared plus three x fourth on the interval zero one. And using the table that I gave it to you, uh, that you should have in front of you, uh, you should see in the table that you have basically two formulas for x squared and x squared. If you look at the table for the cosine series, you are given the representation of x squared on an interval zero c. So x squared is given by uh, c squared over three plus four c squared over uh, pi squared summation of uh, from one to infinity. You don't have to write this down. Um, uh, if you if you have the formula in front of you, minus one to the n n squared cosine n pi x over c. So you just basically have to pay attention to the intervals from now on. And uh, you also have in the same table uh, a formula for x fourth, but between zero and pi. So for x fourth, you have pi fourth over five plus eight summation from one to infinity. Uh, minus 1 to the n and pi squared uh, minus 6 over n fourth cosine of n pi x and this is given between 0 and pi so the tricky part is when you change from an actual interval to a different one right so it's important here to remember that the given x for which you need to come up with this uh, Fourier representation, your given x is between zero and one. And in the table, you can replace x, so you can replace x with any quantity in the same interval given by the formula. So you have to understand that you can use this table of formulas, excuse me, table of uh, Fourier series as formulas, meaning that you can replace x with any quantity between uh, zero and pi, if you look at x fourth. So you can replace anything between, you can replace x everywhere in this uh, representation for x fourth with any quantity between zero and pi. The problem is you have a quantity between zero and one, so you need to make an adapt a change of variable to make it between zero and pi. So how do you do that? Well, obviously the given quantity, pay attention here on the left side, the given x between zero and one, if you multiply that inequality by pi, you're gonna end up with a quantity between zero and pi. So that suggests that you can replace x with pi x into the series for x fourth. So as long as you can make these substitutions involving a constant times what you had before, then you could use immediately that formula so you don't have to do the integral or any other fancy formula. So in general, you can derive other Fourier series by making these convenient substitutions just to change the interval or to change, uh, change it to a different function if you want to. So once again, the given value is between zero and one if you multiply it by pi, it becomes between zero and pi. So that allows you to replace x with pi x because 
pi x is between 0 and pi. So you're, you're allowed to replace x with anything between 0 and pi. You just have to do this carefully so that you don't make a mistake with algebra. So I'm going to replace x with pi x everywhere in the series representation for x fourth. When you go over this on your own, you really have to be patient. So this is one of the nature of this material. It's that you, you have a lot of stuff to write because manipulating this series, well, obviously you deal with lots of um, coefficients and not most of them are not, um, um, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. This is just cosine of uh, nx, sorry about that. This is just nx to begin with. Right? That's the formula for x fourth between 0 and pi. Now, x is replaced with pi x, so that becomes cosine of n pi x uh, inside the cosine. All right, so now you isolate x fourth, because remember, your goal is to have a representation for x squared plus 3 x fourth. So I'm going to isolate x fourth by dividing both sides by pi to the power 4. So if I divide by pi to the four, power of 4, then this becomes 1 over 5, and then 8 over pi to the 4th, and I'm going to copy the rest. And let's save this for now. And in the formula for x squared, I'm going to make an arrow here. All you gotta do is to replace c with one because obviously that's given in between the interval zero c. So if you want it between the interval zero one, all you have to do is just to replace c with one. So x squared will be one over three plus four over pi squared summation from one to infinity minus one to the n over n squared cosine of n pi x. So the last step is obviously to come up with these two together. So the series for x squared plus three times the series for x fourth. And then as a last step, uh, we could do this, um, we could simplify this a little bit. Maybe I'll show you on the next page, but let's do this here on the bottom. So x squared plus three x fourth. The series for x squared in the interval zero one so that's going to be one third plus four over pi squared summation from one to infinity minus one to the n over n squared cosine n pi x plus three quantity the series for x fourth cosine of n pi x. So take a moment, pause the video, because I'll, I'll, I'll show you the answer on the next uh, page. Because uh, the last thing I want you to do is to just combine the cosines together. It's customary to give everything, if I want a Fourier cosine series, it's, it's important to be able to isolate the coefficient of cosine. So you can write it in a standard form, like a, like a Fourier cosine series, right? With, um, with just one instance of cosine. Uh, in the summation and also a constant right you can you have to combine these constants as well so take a moment and do this on your own combine these constants then move it in the summation the constants outside the summation combine the summations by pulling out cosine of n pi x so so you can write it in the standard form and i'm going to show you the answer on the next page and do that on your own and then check with me on the next page All right, so this is the answer. Uh, if you didn't get it, uh, then just uh, maybe talk to me during the office hours. You should get used to this type of step. And again, the idea is not to simplify too much. It's just to identify the Fourier coefficient. Because in many problems, when we move on finally to solving boundary value problems, remember our solution will be in the form of series like this. And so what constitutes to find the solution is to actually figure out these coefficients. Uh, we don't care about whether they are simplified or not. Most of them are pretty ugly. As you can see, I mean, it involves lots of n's, you know, minus one to the n, whatever, depending on the function to start with. 
But to say that you found the solution, it means to find the coefficients of the series which represents that solution. So you have to basically be able to say, okay, here's my coefficient, that's the answer. Uh, another challenge is that when you compare it with answers given somewhere in the book, uh, you, you know, if you want to make sure you did it correctly or not, uh, you have to come up with some algebra, you have to simplify it a little bit um, before you decide that, oh, it's not correct. Or if you don't have time or you're not in the mood to do that, use a computer algebra system. They, for example, put the answer given in the book uh, in a big pair of parentheses and your answer in another pair of parentheses in some computer algebra system like Maple. Subtract the two, and if, if it's zero, that means your answer is equivalent to the one in the back of the book. Um, so, but, you know, otherwise it, you don't have to simplify it. Let's go over another example when we use this table, just to practice a little bit with changing of these intervals. So let's say I want this time a full Fourier, rep I mean a general series representation. Uh, so I want a Fourier um, series, not just sine and cosine, because um, this one, one is not going to be I even or odd. Notice the, the previous example here was an even function. So I want a Fourier series over the interval minus 2 and 2. Um, and for the function f of x equals 3x plus x to the power 4. Now remember in the previous lecture I told you that any function uh, over a symmetric interval can be split in an even function plus an odd function. And then the Fourier series is going to be just the Fourier cosine series for the even part and the sine series for the odd part. Uh, and I showed you before that the even part, let's put it here in the corner here, the even part of the function is f of x plus f of minus x over 2 and the odd part was f of x minus f of minus x over 2. Now pay attention because if, if it's already written as a summation of an even and an odd part, you don't have to do this uh, computation with f of x and f of minus x. And so it should be pretty obvious that x fourth is even and 3x is odd as a function between minus 3 and 2. So all I need then as an even, and by, and by the way, when you look at an even part or an odd part, its cosine and sine representation can be taken just on the right half of the interval. So all I need basically is the cosine series for x fourth on the interval 0, 2, and I'm going to need the sine series. Uh, for x, for 3x, on the interval, again, the same interval, on the interval 0, 2. So now I look at the table. Uh, I already worked with x fourth before. And I'm going to just write it down one more time so that I have it in front of me. The Because uh, the table gives me x fourth. Um, once again, it gives you x fourth uh, between 0 and pi. You don't have to write it down again. I just wanted to have it here on the in front of me. All I need is the equivalent of it, but between 0 and 2. So remember, your given interval is 0, 2. How do you come up with an interval between 0 and pi? You make the same substitution, right? So you take the given domain, you divide it by 2, and you multiply by pi. So you multiply by pi over 2, this uh, interval 0, 2, which indicates that you can use the representation between 0 and pi by replacing x with pi over 2 times x. So although it's kind of tedious, I hope it's not too difficult conceptually speaking. Okay, It's not a big deal. It's just, it's just manipulating this series and replacing it with a constant times x. I'm going to skip some um, intermediate steps. You should do more just to convince yourself. 
Well, that's going to be n pi x over 2. And the only thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to move pi fourth over 2 to the fourth, right? Because in order to isolate x fourth on the left side, I need to multiply all this with um, 2 to the fourth, which is 16 over pi fourth. And uh, what do I get? <clears throat> Let's see, I'm going to get that x fourth is going to be, so it's 16 over pi fourth, right? So that's going to be 16 over 5 plus um, 8 times 16. I'm going to write that as a power, right? Like 2 to the 7, because it was 2 thirds, 2 to the fourth over pi fourth, and then the rest of it. All right, so I'm done with the even part. <clears throat> Let's move on to the odd part, which is 3x, 3 times x. Well, in the table, so again, this was given in the table. In the table, let's look at the Fourier sine series for x. In the table, I have again the Fourier sine series for x also in the interval 0 pi. zero less than x less than pi. So that's that's given in the formula. Uh, I need a zero two, the interval zero two. <clears throat> so the same thing, right? I'm gonna replace x with uh, pi over two x in this series. So that's gonna be pi over two x equals two summation from one to infinity minus one to the n plus one over n sine n pi x over 2. I'm going to multiply 2 over pi. Uh, I, I could have multiplied by 3 as well, but just, just to get x by itself. So x is going to be now 4 over pi, um, the summation from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n sine n pi x over 2. And I'll put, put now everything together. <clears throat> so my original function, then, uh, what was it, 3x uh, plus x fourth, let's start with x fourth. Um, 16 over 5 plus 2 to the 7 over pi fourth summation minus 1 to the n. That's the even part, and then plus the three times x, right? Because I have three x here, so three times this series here is becomes three times four, that's 12 over pi. And the summation from minus one to the n plus one over n sine of n pi x over two. Remember what I told you before, it's important to figure out, to write together these Fourier coefficients for sine and cosine, it might be needed, right, in the problem. So it's customary to write now the answer um, into a single summation. So now we're going to bring this coefficient in here and this one here. And we have 2 to the 7 over pi fourth minus 1 to the n n pi squared minus 6 over n fourth cos n n pi x over 2. So this will be your a n and 12 over pi minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n sine of n pi x over 2 and this is your p n. Uh, Alright, so I think that's it for today. Uh, we're going to have a short lesson after this involving, like I said, the convergence. And uh, after that, some, uh, I'm going to finish up the um, chapter on Fourier series with um, some visual examples one more time, maybe, um, to illustrate this. 
results. So that's it for today.